Greetings. I am going to talk about the Electrodacus today. I just got one from Alex from uh, 3D Brothers and I mounted it to an old BMS board I have so I can actually get it to work with the 7S Jehu style boards. Uh, and first things first, getting it configured, it actually has a USB port you can plug in to power it up. And this will give you an idea and also give you a spot that you can actually read and we're waiting for it to boot up so bear with me just a second here while it boots up all right so now in the main menu i know it's hard to see on this screen i'm gonna try to get a little bit closer here we'll come down into parameter settings click ok and then the first option is going to be cell type so you click ok there and you come in and first option is for LiPo batteries. Now I'm using lithium ion, so we're gonna go down one. Oh, gotta hit enter first, and then I can go down. Oh, I was already there, sorry. All right, two, LCL, lithium carbon oxide, I believe, which is what we're gonna be using for lithium ion. So we'll click okay to there, and it automatically switched to seven cells. Now if you look, it'll actually show you how to wire this cable up. You tie the white and black together, and those are your first negative on the line. And then you put your cells in order until you get to number four. Then you take the green and the yellow, tie those together, and those go between your four and six, or in this case, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, between four and five and six, seven, and that'll give you all your cells. So now that you know what you're gonna be setting it up to, you can go ahead and unplug the power. It shuts off. Now to hook this up, you need to hook up to your main power first before you plug your ribbon cable in. This is the last thing you're gonna plug in. So we're just gonna set it up on top of the stack here. Got my ground, and it does use a common ground. Get the positive tied in. And I want to make sure that these lugs are snug, not super torqued because you don't want to crack the boards, assuming you're using boards. There's multiple ways you can wire this. I just wired this up for me because it was the easiest way to do this setup. All right, now that we got our physical hard connections done, now we can hook the ribbon cable in. And now you'll see it. It's going through the boot up sequence. All right, I've already got it programmed so it knows what I have in here already. So we'll go into parameter settings so you can see that. You got two LTL, seven cells. Again, it shows a diagram. And once you get the batteries hooked up, is the only way you can save the settings. Using the USB just allows you to go through and look at the menu, see the instructions that are in there. Um, it has to be connected to a battery to save the settings. So once you get it all set in, you come in, click OK, choose your battery type, which we want the LCO, so OK. Number of cells, click OK. Then you can set how many cells you have. And as you do it, it changes the diagram on how to wire it. We're gonna go back into seven, say okay. And then by default, it's set to 200 amp hours. Uh, when you know how big your pack is, you can go in and configure this down. I think right now I'm probably maybe seven. Oh, and it's going up. Arrows are kind of backwards on this. It's not super intuitive. So I'm just gonna back out of that, not set anything, leave it at 200. So then we can click the back button and you come into monitoring. And now you can see all the cells and you notice there's a gap in there. And then if you look at the wiring diagram, it's also showing that way. Cause you got one, two, three, four, then five is the one where it's a gap and then six, seven, eight, because this is set up to do eight S but we're using it for seven S. And that's just how the BMS has to see it. You got your battery gauge, you got your Wi-Fi indicator, 
and then on the left it shows all the individual stats I have to pull my head back a little way sorry you get battery voltage at the very top I don't know how well you can see that so I apologize and then battery amperage which I'm not pulling anything right now power amperage the PV panels which I don't have a PV hooked up this one's PV and load but I am gonna hook a load up right after I connect my laptop to it so I'm gonna come over here into the Wi-Fi and we're gonna find SBMS 40 on the list here sorry my camera is being a little wonky for you we got the SBMS 40 so we're gonna select that click connect and there's no password it just connects and then I'm gonna refresh my screen I think it automatically refreshes but just in case and there it goes we're connected so now I'm gonna hook a load up to this I have a small 130 watt inverter I'm gonna use them for testing make sure I'm on my load pins plug that in power up my inverter this is a small 130 watt inverter it also has a battery voltage meter on it and I've got my soldering iron plugged into it oddly enough this soldering iron draws slow enough that it'll power it up so we'll power soldering iron on set for 750 degrees and you can see it I'm sorry about that and you can see it starting to build up then we come over to here and you can see it on the screen where the power just jumped up suddenly and then you got the individual cells shown and then over here battery amperage load amperage is 1.8 at 49 watts 14 milliamp hours 16 and then 0.4 watt hours is all the information it gives you it also has logging you can save it to the log I have not set the time and date on my unit so that's not displaying properly but over here again you get your main battery graph you got all the individual cells and you can see they're not balanced I didn't do a load balance charging on this I just put this pack together to get it going uh, it gives you temperature battery voltage internal temp external temp if you have the external sensors hooked up type 2 capacity status very intuitive and my soldering iron is still building up it builds a little bit slow with the small inverter but that's okay it's doing what it's supposed to do this thing is beautifully redesigned I am very happy with it and I already know the BMS feature works for the protection because my first pack I hooked up to this I had some bad cells in it and every time I tried hooking up a load it would shut down on me so the protection works fantastic um, this is currently on Indiegogo with uh, 3D Brothers I will post a link to that in a description of the video as well as a link to my Facebook group I will do another review later on after I've had the solar panels hooked up and had it running for a while. But so far, I am really liking this. I love how compact it is, how small it is. This is a solar charge controller plus BMS unit all in one small little package. Um, to put things in perspective, my solar charge controller that I use on my system uh, for 60 amps was $289. And then each BMS unit that I use it's about 60 75 dollars this i believe is right around 160 170 dollars for both the bms and the solar charge controller that is a fantastic deal uh, especially if you're trying to save money and you want to build a larger pack um, it's definitely worth it like i said this is 40 amps there is connections on the side here that you can hook up uh, external shunts and actually expand this thing to do higher current outputs so it is definitely worth taking a look at and I appreciate y'all's time and watching this video and hopefully we can get this thing crowdfunded and bring it to market y'all have a good day